If you run out of yarn before you finish your design, never fear, you can add on. So the way I do that is I do it from the back side. So I would continue on like I was doing my design. And then on the back side, I would put this yarn on a needle and just run it down so it's covered. And then to start a new yarn, I would just continue where that one left off. So I kind of ran it down the side of that warp and I'm going to run this one up the other side of the warp. So it's not really in the same place. It's on the same warp, but it's on the side of the warp. So you can trim those little ends off. So you ended one and began one. And you're ready to just keep on weaving. Nobody will ever know you ended your yarn and started a new one. So that's the way you always splice your yarn. You just end the one that's short and continue a new one right in the same spot. So what happens if your center bar is not in the middle of your cinch? So first of all, make sure you pack it down. If it's just a small amount, you can probably press it down enough. If it's quite a bit, like an inch, then what you want to do is you want to start at one side and pull on the, each of these warps individually. And that will enable you to slide that bar up. So just pull on them, do it a little bit at a time, and then go back and repeat it. So you can move it, and especially if you have a bar like in the middle here and it's not where you want it, you can do the same thing. Pull on the warps until you get it in the right place. If the edges of your weaving are kind of skimpy and your warp is showing through, chances are you are not going around that warp with both of your cords. So chances are you've gotten this far and you go around this way and start back and start back with this one too. So, oops. so you can see only one cord is going around that outside edge and that's why it gets skimpy. So the proper way to do that is the one in back comes forward and the one forward goes back all the way around that outside warp. So you can see you have two cords going around that outside warp. Now if you get long further here and you've discovered, oh I made a mistake way back, instead of taking it out if it's a little skimpy, you can actually take one of your cords and go around this an extra time or two. And oops. So you can go around it a couple times and that'll fill in some of that skimpiness. Okay, if you are getting not getting a diagonal when you do your two colors, if you're getting kind of this herringbone look where this one is going this way, this one is going this way, and this one way, one is going this way. It's because of the way you twist your yarn. Now, if you always do it like this, drop one and pick the other one up, you get this herringbone look because your diagonal will go this way when you go left to right, and it will go this way when you go right to left. And the way to compensate for that is instead of going over, you go under. So I go over when I go left to right, and I go under when I go right to left. Now this is not the wrong way to do it, it's just a different way. So there are, are all sorts of 
designs you can get by the way you twist your yarn. Whether you twist it this way, which is going over, or you twist it, tw twist it this way, which is going under. Or you can actually do a full twist. If you do a full twist here, you're getting a different look. You're getting the same color over that warp. Instead of, instead of the red, you're getting the blue. And again, at the edge, whether you do a full twist or half twist means whether you have it on the opposite warp or the same warp. So just by varying the twist, whether you twist away from you or towards you, you can get different looks. So I've been asked how much design should you put on a cinch? Well, that depends on a couple things. One, how long is your cinch? And two, is your cinch, cinch going to be used for everyday use or is it going to be a show cinch? For example, this is a 28 inch cinch. This one's 32. So you can see there's a lot uh, more expanse of the warp cord showing. And this one is a, a decorative cinch can be used for show or also for wall decoration and it has more design almost to the point of being too much but if that was for a show cinch that would be perfectly all right. The other thing you can do if you don't want to put a lot of design on but you need to stabilize your warp a little bit more is you can put some plain bars on. You can either put them on with alternating colors or you can put them on with the same color and they wouldn't show as much. So again, depends on the length and what it's going to be used for. So can you wash your cinch? Certainly. Use a large bucket or tub, cold water soap such as uh, Woolite, Synthropol, or Orvis paste. Wash them in cold water and then rinse them thoroughly. they be like new again. So don't be afraid to wash your cinches. And the other thing about uh, cinches is, is be sure to use them. When you use them, the fibers kind of felt together because the way you make felt is heat, moisture, and agitation. And that's what you get on a cinch. So they actually get better with use. So if you want to make your own cinch loom, the way I make them out is out of one by twos. The uprights are four foot long with multiple holes drilled in the side. The holes I put one inch apart. And then the top bar is 12 inches with a rabbited joint. So um, if you don't have tools to do that kind of joint, you can just put it on top and screw it in. And then the bars are roughly 10 and 5 eighths inches long. Take a measurement between your uprights and see how long you need yours to be. And then each of these bars is 2, in two inches again. And then holes drilled in the ends of them to accommodate the pins. And this is just a, a quarter inch dowel with a bead attached. And then I put my hooks, and I like to cover my hooks with... Um, uh, clear clear tubing and then that way it protects the metal buckle a little bit better and then space these about two inches apart and I'll try to get a picture of the bottom so you can see how the bottom looks so at the bottom again I make my inside bar however about ten and five eighths to fit the inside measurement and the hooks two inches apart again. And then this one has holes at the bottom so you can adjust the the bottom bar up or down. Now you don't have to have the bottom bar adjustable. You can just screw it in from the sides and have the top bar adjustable. Put a few more holes in it. And again this is put in with quarter inch dowels with with beads on them. And then I like to make legs. These are 16 inches long and they have wing nuts on them so that you can take the legs off and store them easily. 
So I'll try to put a materials list up at the end of this little segment so that you can see just what you need. So here's just another view of the bottom of the loom. You can see how the legs are attached with bolts and wing nuts and how the, the bottom bar is adjustable, although you don't need to make the bottom adjustable. So just another view, another idea.